Good morning, folks. These videos of Santiaguito in Guatemala were taken as it began erupting right around the time El Salvador had their magnitude 7 earthquake last week. Today we'll watch the sun throw a little tantrum and some amazing weather around the world, but we'll begin over at spaceweathernews.com and see that the last day on our star had no major ejections, but bottom left, that sunspot is indeed getting active. A number of solar flares yesterday pushed the X-ray flux up into M-class range twice, with the ionization of the upper atmosphere causing brief minor radio glitches. Wasn't a major radio blackout, though. The flares indeed came from the incoming active region newly born on the south. You'll see those flashes of solar flares here in 131 angstroms of light. This view looks at the extreme ultraviolet and a bit of the X-ray spectrum of electromagnetism, in this case, given off by 7 and 20 times ionized iron excited in the solar corona. Sticking with ionized iron, 8 times ionized here, you can see what causes solar flares. These magnetic loops coming from the sunspot are charged material that can be accelerated to near the speed of light when these violent fields interact, triggering the release of X-ray energy. And as we move on over to ionized helium, we can see that the region was active, but not active enough to make CMEs. The plasma remains local to the activity. Three sunspots on the disk present something to watch closely today. What a surge in the wake of the planetary alignment three days ago. The established grouping and the one born near him on the north are split magnetically, and the surrounding growth is most interesting to us. Meanwhile, I can spot two areas of magnetic interaction and delta potential in the southern incoming group. That's two areas where solar flares can be triggered, and that's where we've been seeing them. Top quakes of note the last day were not the largest in magnitude as people died in Poland when that one struck a mine, and way out of the usual variety, that's an earthquake in northern Egypt. Remember the earthquake and weather connection in just a moment. It's been five days since our last magnitude 6 earthquake or larger, and we've had no coronal holes for those days. Well, here comes one to face Earth on the south today. Eyes open for upticks in seismicity as we enter December. This tornado rolled through Mississippi yesterday afternoon. They would continue overnight through Alabama where people died as buildings collapsed. The tornado event strictly stuck to the convergence line this time. Another of the spiral arms of the powerful low-pressure earth spot raging through the states as the convergence line shoots offshore tonight and the cold and snow on the western side of the storm marches towards the coast. Well folks, this was just east of Egypt where they had that quake. Horrible weather and flash flooding, battering Saudi Arabia, around the same time it was easing up from Qatar. Infrastructure crumbling, and even if it wasn't raining in some parts of the country, they became aware very quickly of just how bad it was in others as the runoff speed and mass is shocking. At least seven dead, and that's before the land froze. Folks just north of the sun's anvil, where some of the world's hottest temperatures can be found, snow blanketed the desert, although to be honest, some of the locals appeared to be loving it. We are still battling Apple on the app beta release. Android is ready and just waiting on the fruit. We've got the rest of the pressure and radar forecast followed by shots of our star to close. It's 4.40 a.m. in the new valley of the sun. Eyes open, no fear. Be safe, everyone.